What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here reviewing today Skyrim on Nintendo Switch. The Elder Scrolls series has built up a reputation over the last few decades as being some of the biggest RPGs ever made. Each new game manages to cram in more quests, dungeons, and fantastic environments than the last, but Skyrim is where the studio truly took things to the next level. This single title can easily amount to hundreds of hours of playtime, so we already know it's great in other versions. The question I want to focus on in this video is if Bethesda was able to bring this massive adventure to a handheld system properly, or is this just just a ported mess. Well, as you can see, to start with, the graphics are shockingly good. To be honest, when I first installed the game, I was worried because it downloaded so quickly. My brain just went, oh no, everything is going to be ultra low resolution or something. That wasn't the case though. The world clearly still looks stunning. Now, this is just a theory, but it sort of looks like they took the lighting effects of Skyrim's remaster and put them on the textures of the PS3 version, because there's a special glow to everything that I love. Despite these crazy good graphics, there's really short load times and solid viewing distance. This doesn't try and trick you the way some ports do, where they'll try and cover everything in fog so you don't see objects rendering off in the distance. I will say that there's some pretty obvious cosmetic pop-ins. Now, what I mean by that is as you're running through like a wonderful forest, you'll see grass just sort of growing in front of you, and it's pretty close. For the most part, this isn't too noticeable until you're traveling to areas with lots of nature stuff. Stuff. And then suddenly, it looks like you're standing in a circle of perfectly formed bushes. While you're indoors, this doesn't really happen. It's here that you really see the full power of Skyrim come out. The glow of flames, the creepy shadows, and shambling zombies. It appears fantastic, and even more so when it's in handheld. At this point, the visual style of Skyrim is getting a bit outdated just because it came out so many years ago, but when you just have it on a tiny screen like this, it's not really that apparent. I really, really think that this is the preferred way to play. There doesn't seem to be any downgrade whatsoever when you're playing it like this, and the font is big enough that I can still mess with menus and see everything fine, or charge towards a spider and chop them up. The action is still so addictive to watch unfold, even on this smaller scale. Handheld mode is obviously the biggest selling point of grabbing this, because it's just so crazy that you can see a game that is this big and take it anywhere. Included in this port is all the DLC ever released for Skyrim, which means you can fight vampires, build a house, and essentially deal with dragons anywhere, anytime. As a bonus exclusive to the Switch, there's also some unique Legend of Zelda loot. These can be gotten by using amiibos or by climbing to the top of the tallest mountain. Either way, these chests contain some really great gear from Breath of the Wild. To be honest, they're not the strongest items, but just the same, it is awesome to sneak around and do assassination jobs with Link's famous blade. There were so many silly times when I was just trying to walk through the forest and got ambushed by a bunch of monsters and I'd have to fight them off, and it felt so cool to suddenly be playing as Link in a different world. In fact, I even made myself a Dark Elf so I look like a really creepy version of Dark Link but wearing Good Link's armor. Now, I'm not saying that this is worth the price tag alone, but for really hardcore fans of Skyrim, I found this awesome. It felt like something new and different to try and draw me in and grab my attention. The final major difference to this re-release is motion controls, and these are actually way cooler than I expected. By disconnecting the Joy-Cons, you have three added gameplay features. Swinging them will let you attack or defend with that specific arm, and it works fine. This is interesting, but not something I actually used a bunch. The other two things, however, are absolutely fantastic. While aiming a bow, you can tilt your right Joy-Con to aim a little more precisely. This became the primary way I would play. Basically, I'd push the control stick to get close to my target and then tilt for that last 10% for exact accuracy. That sounds like a silly gimmick, but it functions insanely well. As someone whose primary weapon is the bow, this completely changed how quickly I could drop enemies in dungeons. The other motion element they've thrown in is lockpicking. This side-by-side -side shows that with each Joy-Con, I'm moving a specific stick. Within my controller itself is HD rumble, and it's making it where I can feel the gears clicking into place. Breaking through even the hardest locks in the game now is a total breeze, as long as you take it slow and use this feature. 
I'm genuinely blown away that they managed to make motion controls feel good. I'm somebody who hates this kind of stuff. It just seems so silly to set down my controller and have to do wacky stuff, but it didn't feel like that in this. Instead, it felt like an additional layer on top, a new aspect to change how I'd play, and it does so really smartly. While Skyrim on Switch may just be a port, I really enjoyed that they created some new twists to how we interact with it. The introduction of Zelda costumes, decent controls, and handheld mode are different enough to make this old gym feel fresh. My only real problems with it is that first off, I think they may have messed with the brightness during the reprogramming phase. Some areas look darker and no amount of messing with my settings ever made it look correct. Now this isn't everywhere, but a few dungeons were just so dimly lit I found myself having to use a torch in order to even be able to see 10 feet in front of me. I also ran into some badly mixed audio where 15 people are all trying to talk to me at once and at the same time I can't hear anybody because there's blaringly loud background music. These are small issues, but I just want to be clear that this project isn't quite flawless. Overall, I have to say I'm glad I got to go through the Land of Elder Scrolls again, and I'm certainly going to be doing some more side quests for many months ahead. Okay, so we've heard some good and some bad, but let's over the ratings board and put a big number on it. I am giving Skyrim on Nintendo Switch a 9 out of 10. You know, even after putting so many hours into this, I cannot believe that this game exists on a handheld. Seriously, I feel like I live in the future. I never would have expected that I could live long enough to see a game this big on a console so small. Thanks so much for watching gamers, if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, share with your friends and subscribe if you haven't already, but do me the biggest favor of all and keep dreaming. All right, now I'm going to go finish that vampire quest line. I want to go be a vampire lord and just kill everybody. <laughs> oh, hey, I was just playing a little bit of Grand Theft Auto on my Darth Vader PSP. Are you curious what I'm going to come out with next? Well, if you click this button, you'll be subscribed to be the first to know. Also, if you click over here and here, you can see my latest review and my latest top 10. I promise it was super good. Or it was really bad and I'm sure you can just make fun of me in the comments. Either way, it'll be a lot of fun. Thanks so much for watching.